27 years ago, the city of Houston lost one of the prized possessions of the city in the Houston Oilers. But today, in Madden 24, we will bring the Houston Oilers back in Madden 24 franchise in this expansion series. I am so excited to get this underway. Madden 24 has made it possible to relocate and rebrand a team right from the jump. And that's where we start our journey. The Houston Oilers return to the NFL after a 27 year hiatus and they will play at Oil Rig Stadium. This is the stadium that was built with kind of nostalgic feel. As you can see, they have kind of an older branding to the stadium, but everything's really brand new. Well, who is going to be the head ball coach? How about former Houston Oilers running back Eddie George, who is currently coaching in college, but now that he heard a new expansion team is coming to the NFL, he has jumped at the opportunity. Now, in order to now add a expansion team to the series, we had a couple of expansion draft rules. Now, obviously in Madden, you cannot actually add an ex expansion team. We had to replace a team, but we had to completely gut it and follow these rules. So the first rule of this expansion draft is you can only have one player from each organization selected. The rest of the roster will be free agents or undrafted free agents. So we will pick one guy from each team. The second clause, no player selected can be listed at number one at their position on the depth chart. And wide receivers and cornerbacks cannot be in the top three. Pretty self-explanatory. You cannot select any starters. Number three, no player selected can be 2021, 20, 22, nor 23 first rounders. 23 second rounders are also excluded. So we cannot draft first round picks from the last three years or second rounders this year. But there is one exception, at least two exceptions. We can select one player from the second round of the 2023 NFL draft and we get to keep the team's first round pick who we are replacing, which in this series, we are replacing the Las Vegas Raiders since they are the worst team. Well, at least one of the worst teams in the NFL. And I wanted to go into a division, which is tough. And I wanted to have more of a challenge in this series. So we are joining the AFC West. So let's not wait any longer and get into this first ever Madden expansion draft with the first overall pick of the 2023 NFL expansion draft the Houston Oilers will select Dorian Thompson Robinson quarterback UCLA if you've been watching preseason or maybe if you've been living under a rock you haven't heard Dorian Thompson Robinson is lighting it up and this athletic quarterback who also has a pretty strong arm and he's shown he has accuracy in college, is going to be our star of the future with our number one overall pick. I think the upside is there, and I really, really like his mobility. With the second overall pick, we will transition over to defense and choose a New England Patriot and Christian Barmore. I really, really like him in the interior defensive line. He is one of the most underrated interior defensive lineman here in the NFL and he's very very young still 24 years old he's going to have some developing to do and I think that he's going to be one of the cornerstones of this organization so with our third pick we will stick on the defensive line and choose AJ Epinesa a former second round pick who is now entering his third season here with the Bills I think Ebenezer has a lot of potential. I watched a lot of Big Ten football when he was in college, and he was a wrecker at Iowa, and I really, really like him. But he does have the player tag trade target, so if other teams want him and he is not good for us, he could be a potential trade chip. Now, Eddie George loves to run the football, and what do you need? You need a dominant back and I think Antonio Gibson could be that now one of the rules is that we cannot select any starters 
But Antonio Gibson is kind of like a fringe. Like he's right behind Brian Robinson on the official depth chart, and he still has, you know, split carries and he still gets in on a lot of passing downs. And that's one thing I like about him is that he's not gonna just run the football. He's gonna catch the football out of the backfield, kind of like the modern running back has to do. And with our fifth pick, which obviously meets the last criteria we are going to keep tyree wilson from the raiders tyree wilson gets to stay in texas because he played his college ball at texas tech and he will be one of our stars of the defense so let's go division by division and look at our picks for each team from the Packers, we will be selecting Wake Forest Zach Tom. He's in his second year. He's a versatile offensive lineman, a guy that we can move all over. And you know we got to start with the men up front. Well, let's get a former Packer next from the Bears and Robert Tanyan. If we're going to have a young quarterback in Dorian Thompson Robinson, we got to have a guy that's going to catch the ball. He's got 96 catching, which is one of the best catching ratings of all tight ends in the game. He also could be a trade target. So if our young tight ends develop and we don't need him, he could be dealt. From the Lions, we will break up the Aquara brothers. We will be acquiring Julian Aquara in this expansion draft. I think he's a guy that will be there as a piece, not necessarily a star, but you do need depth in these builds. And then from the Vikings, we will select our first special teamer in Jack Podlesny. Now, Podlesny was a 2022 SEC Special Teamer of the Year winner. So he has experience on being on a championship team. So let's go to the NFC West, where our selection here will be Devin Bush. Devin Bush was a victim of, I think, maybe being in not the right situation i mean pittsburgh obviously it's like pittsburgh you got a ball out there but maybe it was just a wrong time wrong situation maybe he gets a fresh restart with the seahawks but now he gets an even fresher restart with the oilers from arizona we will select left tackle josh jones who is currently a backup there in arizona and i think that this is a guy that we could squeeze something out of he's still in his mid-20s and he has pretty good pass blocking ratings from the Rams, we will select the speedster out of Louisville, Tutu Atwell, who has not yet found his stride yet, but maybe with the Oilers, he will find it. He's going to add some much needed speed to the receiver group, and we're going to have a really young receiving group, and he will be one of those dynamic playmakers. And then from the 49ers, we will select defensive tackle Javon Kinlaw. He was a monster at South Carolina. He had very high upside, but then in the league, it just hasn't panned out. Hopefully, we can turn it around for him in Houston. We move to the NFC East, where we start with the Eagles, and we will select Sidney Brown, third rounder, and he is going to be added to this really young Houston secondary who's going to need a maybe a leader in that secondary and maybe Sidney Brown could be that a good tackler and he also has an identical twin which we will see later from the Cowboys I select Jordan Lewis now Lewis is on the last year of his contract he's going to be the highest paid guy on our entire roster and I don't know. This is more of a tryout for him in his final contract year to see if he will stick. Well, if it doesn't work out with him, we have a couple of fallback options. One of those being Cordell Flott, who is a decent uh, zone cover cornerback, and he has okay speed at 89. Maybe he will stick in the future. We move to the NFC South, where we will select Robert Hainsey from the Tampa Bay Bucks. You always need offensive linemen. From the Panthers, we select LaVisca Chenault, who has some upside as a runner. And what I mean by that is that he can literally play running back if you wanted him to. We can transition him to running back if it doesn't work out at receiver. He has that dynamic ability to also be a returner, to be an all-around guy, as long as you just get the ball in his hands. And he's still only 24 years old. Other guys that really need a second chance in the NFL, and it probably wasn't his fault if it wasn't for injuries, it's Jalen Smith, former star linebacker from the Cowboys. He gets his restart here with the Oilers. He did sign with the Saints a one-year deal, but now he's coming over to the Oilers. And then from the Atlanta Falcons, we select Matt Hennessy. 
As you can see, we're signing a lot of offensive linemen for good reason. They're all under one year contracts. So this is really a tryout for each one of these guys. We move to the AFC East where we will select David Edwards, another offensive lineman here from the Bills. And all of these linemen have different skill sets and it's a matter of who's gonna fit the scheme, which we will look at a little bit later. Isaiah Wynn will be the top tackle that we are drafting and top offensive lineman we are drafting in this entire expansion draft. He's probably the one that I am for sure is going to stick around. His attributes are way too good in order for him to move on. But we move back to the secondary with the Jets and we select Bryce Hall. The Jets actually have four good cornerbacks backs on their roster. Bryce Hall is one of them. He has decent speed at 88, but his zone coverage is pretty high. We might play a lot of zone here in year one. We drafted Sidney Brown going to the AFC North earlier in this draft. We select his identical twin, Chase Brown. The Brown brothers reunite. We broke up the Aquara brothers from the Lions, and we re reunite the Brown brothers here in Houston. One of the most underrated rookies last season was tight end Isaiah Likely. Obviously, he was behind Mark Andrews, who took a lot of the shine, but Really, fantasy football owners know that Isaiah likely had a couple of really good weeks. Another offensive lineman as we continue in the AFC North, Kevin Dotson. He looks like a solid guard, actually has really good pass blocking attributes. But in the AFC South, we decide to get a little bit of a revival project here with Clavon Chason. It is now his fourth year. It's put up or shut up. I think that he's going to have to have a good season here in Houston in order for him to stick around here in the long term. Now, this is a move that I love because we not only get Kyle Phillips from the Titans, we reunite him with his college quarterback in Dorian Thompson Robinson. Phillips will be playing in the slot a lot this season. We'll see what he's got. He's one of those efficient route runners in short field. At safety, we really need some bodies. And I think at our secondary is going to be a little shaky here in year one. We'll have to see. But Nick Cross is a guy that has a lot of speed. He has a high ceiling, but we'll see if he reaches it. We do need a quarterback mentor, and that's where we go to the Houston Texans and select Case Keenum. Now, this is interesting. He's going from the Houston Texans to the Houston Oilers, and he went to college in Houston. He is a mentor, which is going to help Dorian Thompson Robinson's XP in training. So he's a big reason why Dorian Thompson Robinson is probably going to start right away because his XP, he's going to benefit from Case Keenum. Now, the final division, the AFC West, where we will be, we will select Sky Moore. Now, Sky Moore is a fringe starter to me. Like, I've seen reports where they're saying he's going to be breakout player of the year. Some are saying he's going to be a bench rider and Rashi Rice is going to take over for his spot. I don't really know. But in a situation like that, I feel good about just taking any one of those receivers. I, I think they're pretty like interchangeable. You have Patrick Mahomes. With the Chargers, we select Nick Williams. He is nothing more than a mentor and to help our young defensive linemen develop. From the Raiders, we will be keeping DeCorey and Bennett. Now, we are already keeping Tyree Wilson, so that one didn't count since we already have the rule where we get to keep the first round pick of the team we're replacing. DeCorey and Bennett will be here. Now, he is a fast cornerback. I don't know if he's going to be anything more than that. We've got to develop his coverage skills, and we'll see what happens from there. And our final pick, we get to reserve one second round pick in this entire draft in the 2023 draft. We select Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims was excellent in college. Excellent. He goes to a Denver Broncos situation where due to injury, he's going to play probably right away in real life, but he also gets to stay in his home state in Texas. This is going to be interesting because he actually was one of the record holders for Texas wide receivers in high school. I think he owns the receiver record for a career, which is incredible. So let's take a look at the rest of the squad outside of the expansion draft. Now, if you've been following my channel the last week or so, we have been building up a couple of college players where we will, where we will have storylines to follow throughout their career. The first is J. Ron McAllister, the undrafted running back out of Montana. He's going to be 
a pretty interesting storyline because he's going to be behind Antonio Gibson. He is more of a power back, so he complements Antonio Gibson very, very well, but he does have decent speed. He's at about 90 speed or so. He's going to be a guy that can break some tackles, has some trucking. We're going to see how his career goes. Now, the next storyline player we had coming into this series was a two-star athlete. And not only a two-star athlete, literally the same season. So he played soccer and football in the fall at Virginia Tech. This is slot cornerback or free safety Anthony Bishop. In college, his deficiency was really covering guys but he was a very solid tackler he is gonna make his transition over to free safety we'll see how that goes but he's gonna get some playing time but we do have some veterans in front of him so we'll have to keep an eye on his playing time and if he gets into the game but a very interesting story to follow speaking of the veteran who will be in front of him we will sign logan ryan in free agency to be that mentor at the position and hopefully get some XP for Anthony Bishop. Now, Logan Ryan is a veteran. I don't know how long he's going to be around, but he does have a pretty high overall. We'll see how he regresses throughout this series. Brandon Bolden will be the mentor in the running back room. Now, Brandon Bolden is not only a running back, he can also play fullback, and he is excellent on special teams. He's one of those Patriots players who is a legend just because of his special teams play. Other notable names we are signing. How about Randy Moss's son, Thaddeus Moss? Now, he started his career with Washington. It did not work out there. He gets a second chance here with the Houston Oilers to be maybe the two or three tight end, depending on how, you know, the development goes with Isaiah Likely and Robert Tanyan. Jonah Tavai, Jelani Tavai's little brother, he will get signed as an undrafted free agent out of San Diego State. Interested to just see how he develops. Michael Brockers will be the mentor here on the defensive line. I'm hoping that he can hopefully bring around, bring along Javon Kinlaw's development because I'm suspecting that Kinlaw could end up just being a bust. I hope he proves me wrong. And then in the middle linebacker group, we bring in Jayon Brown. We need some added depth. He's a decent linebacker, only 69 overall, but he's a guy that has history of being a pretty good NFL player. So that's going to do it for most of our roster. We will highlight really going over the full roster and mini camp and all of that type of stuff next episode. But here are the settings we are rocking with. We are going to be playing on all Madden simulation with eight minute quarters, no accelerated clock. I will make sure to add the play call cooldown and play call limit to one because I play these series offline. So these ser these settings are now available for offline franchise, which is amazing. We're also going to turn off the home field advantage because I hate those uh, advantages that they added to this game. It's just too arcadey for me. Trade difficulty will be set on hard. I did some testing and hard seems like the best difficulty. And then the free agent motivation impact is going to be very high. So whatever they want is going to be hugely impactful whether or not you can re-sign certain players. So if I'm trying to sign a guy from, let's just say, New York, and he his one of his motivations is to be close to home it's going to be tough to assign that guy one other note here i want to turn off progressive fatigue we all know that was a bug and an issue with madden last year i have no idea if they fixed it this year so we're just going to turn it off having backups play later in the season is definitely not something we want so coach eddie george is going to want to run the ball but he knows he has a scrambling quarterback a guy that's going to look to get the ball out of his hands quickly so we'll be running the spread offense but that means we're going to get a heavy dosage of antonio gibson in the passing game as well as the running game and then on defense we'll be running a 3-4 defense we'll be running the disguise 3-4 which has a 90 percent scheme fit so we have a 90 plus percent scheme fit on offense and on defense you could kind of see what the strategy was in the expansion draft and how we built this team i will talk more about the offensive and defensive coordinators next episode as i figure that out but they do have the new development trees and picking your path to developing your guys so i do want to kind of figure out you know which coordinator i want which one makes sense and which trees i want to build our coaching staffs around 
And there is a chance that obviously your coaching staff or your coach that you're developing could leave for another job because I'm going to leave CPU firings on so that our coordinators could leave if there is a job opening. So here's our schedule here in season number one. We will start the season at the Broncos. Our first like six matchups are super tough. And honestly, everybody in the NFL this year is pretty decent. We are definitely the worst by far. I believe our overall is 72. Our offense is like 73 and our defense is like 73, something like that. We are by far the worst team on paper in the NFL. But what would you expect from an expansion draft? So here is what our lineup looks like. And just looking at the depth chart, we're thinking that, you know, since Dorian Thompson Robinson is our quarterback, I could try out Case Keenum for one game just to allow Don, uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson to develop. But our receiving group is going to be very young and going to be very crucial to the success of the quarterback because we have Marvin Mims, Tutu Atwell, LaVisca Chanel, Shamar Moore, or Sky Moore. Wow, not Shamar Moore. Sky Moore and Kyle Phillips. So we have a very young receiving group. I think the strength of our team, though, is going to be our defensive line. We have Barmore, Kinlaw, Julian Aquara, Nick Williams. I think we're going to be decent there. I don't know about everywhere else, though. Like, we are going to be interesting, to say the least. Tyree Wilson is going to be an interesting rookie to develop. I think that part of the team is probably going to be the strongest, but that's not saying much, seeing that I'm not even sure on that front. So that's going to do it here in episode one. Let me know if you guys are excited for this and let me know what you guys think of the team and your uh, predictions here for season one. Now, next episode, I'm going to have an episode to get to know the team a little better. I'm going to have some position battles along with training camp, uh, a.k.a. you know all the drills that they added to the game. And we will play some preseason games as well. So I am super, super excited to get this series underway. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This series is going to be a whole lot of fun. Can't wait. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money. I got time to get it. Talking on me, so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in the dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the 4-5 on the wet side. But I'm from the east side, that's how we slide, that's how we ride, yeah, yeah, that's how we ride.